Hey, what's up? Welcome back, Andrew Kramer here. And uh, what we're gonna do is take our rendered particles and finish the composite off. Um, what I did while you were away is I simply replaced the red cell particle with the green cell particle. And to do that, I selected the layer, take the green particle, drag it on top of it, hold down Option or Alt, and let it go, and it replaces itself and everything is the same. I went, um, let's see. And the other thing I did is went to the particles and just desaturated it a little bit with hue and saturation. And again, on the background, just brought the saturation down like everything was dead and dying. So anyway, I rendered that out. And now we have our red blood. And we have our green blood. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started compositing this together. So I'm going to take our footage, drag it into the Make New Composition, and uh, this is what we need. So I'm going to kind of zoom forward here. So right here is about when we want to zoom in. So to set this up, we're going to create a new camera, and we're also going to create a new null object. And then we'll turn our footage into 3D and our null object into 3D. And then we're going to parent our camera to the null object. And I'll show you why in a second. And what we're going to do is just set the animation up first. So I'll hit P on the camera, set a keyframe for the position. And then actually I'm going to go to the top view and move the anchor point of the camera up past the layer. I'll show you why in a sec. And then I'm going to move the camera forward. So I'm going to move forward a couple of frames. I don't want it to be too fast. And then I'm just going to move the camera until it turns black and the camera has crossed through the footage. OK, so right now we're just zooming straight in. We're not really changing where the camera zooms into. And that's what the null object is for. So I'm going to hit P, set a keyframe for the null object at the same time and then move forward just before the second keyframe for the position of the camera and I'm going to move the position of the null and it's going to move the camera into the place I want to zoom it into. So wherever this center null point is, that's where the camera is going to zoom into. So we're going to go kind of just in the abdomen here, right about there. So now the camera moves down and goes straight into that area. Now we're going to set two easy ease keyframes. So I'm going to hit F9, and that's going to kind of smooth that flow. And for a simple look at what we're doing, I'm going to take our red blood footage and drag it out. And I'm going to edit it a little bit. We're going to just cut some of it off. We're going to start it about here. And we'll time it up with just before it turns black. And so now you see we zoom in and it cuts to this inside camera view. Now we can turn on the motion blur for the footage. Let's see, the motion blur. And the motion blur for the comp and that'll sort of sell the effect a little bit better. So let's go and preview this. So right now we are at a pretty good place, you know, we can say, hey, that's pretty good, but we've already taken this tutorial so far, we might as well take it to the next level. So what we're going to do is go just before it zooms in and we're going to shut the red blood cell footage off. And what I have is some reference pictures. And what they are is just various things such as a high res picture of the shirt, of his chest, and close up of his chest for, uh, you know, when we zoom in really close, we have that detail. So used a macro lens to be able to capture this. And then also shirt detail, which we're probably not going to use for this tutorial, but I'm sure you can imagine how I could incorporate it. But anyway, and that's actually one of the reasons why Sam didn't uh, do this particular tutorial is because 
He wasn't too thrilled about the partial nudity that was required. He actually wanted to do, you know, full nudity, and that was just way too exciting for even, you know, this tutorial, which is based on medical science. Okay, what we're going to do is take the picture of his body and bring it out, and we'll scale it down, and we'll bring the opacity down. What we want to do is roughly line it up with his actual um, upper body. So something like this, we can rotate it so that it kind of fits in there. And then what we're going to do is parent it to the footage and turn it also to a 3D layer. Okay, what we're going to do next is take the pen tool and we're going to zoom in and we're going to draw a mask around the area that we're going to kind of move in on. And that should be good, but we can we can fix it. And then I'm going to feather it out, F, and uh, just feather it out a bunch here. And uh, turn the motion blur on for the layer. And I'm just going to shut it off for the composition. And I'm going to just scrub through. And what we want to do is animate the opacity of the chest picture to fade on with the camera zooming in. So I'll hit U, bring up the animation for the camera, and for the null. It's good to reference that also. And just about here, we'll set the opacity to zero. And we'll set a keyframe. We'll move forward, and we'll turn the opacity up. And what this is going to do is sort of kind of go sort of like an x-ray vision for just a moment. And uh, should kind of make for a, a pretty cool effect. So I'm just kind of spacing these keyframes out so that we can get the effect just right. Now I do want to slow down the animation of the camera here towards the end because I want to be able to see the detail. I want, I want to be able to make the point that we are going, you know, into the skin. And uh, let me just shrink the area. So now the other thing we'll do is take our real high resolution picture of the chest, bring it out, turn it to a 3D layer, and it's really large right now, so we'll scale it down. And uh, just we'll position it right there where we're zooming in. And uh, so you can see we're really getting in there, getting in there very, very close. So I'll scale it down even more. So. So to this picture, the, the close-up picture, we're going to add an elliptical mask, and we're going to feather it out a lot. And then we'll uh, bring the expansion in. And then we'll match the color correction, so effect, color, curves, and uh, looks like we need to brighten it up a little bit. And then we'll add a tint effect to desaturate it a little bit. a little less contrast. Okay, so that looks pretty good and uh, what we want to do is fade this effect on as well. So we'll hit T, set the opacity to 0 and then up to 100 as it zooms in. And then we'll also round the edge of this off also so you know it sort of matches the camera and the camera is sort of creating the uh, see-through effect okay so now at this point right before it turns black let's take our red blood and line that up and turn that layer on And I'll just cut, I'm going to cut the first frame off. And then we'll go ahead and turn on the motion blur for the project. And we'll go ahead and preview it. Okay, so it looks a little bit quick. I don't think we're seeing, um, you know, the really surface of the skin enough. 
Now we want to sort of slow it down more at the end. So we'll bring up the track editor and select the position. And we'll select the last keyframe here and we're just going to drag this to the left. So we just want to drag it, I don't know, a little bit, something like that. And so now it's going to linger on this last part a little bit longer. And uh, now we can sort of set the fade ins for each of the layers so that each layer fades on at the appropriate time. So we want this to start a little bit later. And then our surface. So let's take a look at this and see what that does. So as you can see, that looks pretty good, and uh, we can add our, our music back in as well. Now, to create the effect where the particles sort of die, all I did was extend the composition, and then bring the other footage of the green cell that I rendered out, which would be green blood, and just brought that out and uh, lined it up like that, and then just faded it over top. So, pretty uh, scientific there. I'm sure there's other ways to transition that on, but uh, now in the original example, the particle I rendered out actually instead of setting the displacement in 3D Max to 40, I set it to negative 40, which made the particle look more shriveled, which basically made it smaller instead of larger. So uh, that's one little thing I did differently. But you get the idea, and uh, I will make uh, most of this stuff available to download. And, uh, you know, I hope you guys found this tutorial useful. And... Uh, I hope you understand why uh, I need an extra week to get this one done because uh, I really had to think it through and make sure to organize it in a way that was useful to you guys. And uh, remember, you can download the project and the source footage and uh, start uh, working on it from any uh, point in the series. And of course, check out our products page. We have some great DVDs, including designer sound effects, which I used in the beginning of this series. And, uh, you know, after using the uh, house music at the beginning of the tutorial, uh, I'm probably going to get sued. So if you could, you know, buy a couple of the DVDs, that would be really helpful. But uh, just in case, house, I think it's a great show. You ought to go buy all the DVDs, watch it on Fox, um, Universal, great company. They distribute it. And uh, let me just say, I think uh, lawyers are, are very fine people. And, uh, you know, they have souls just like everybody else.